there would be two rules about human diversity. One is that there's lots of variation uh, within all groups, but there's also a gradation between groups so that there are recurring and sometimes large average differences between racial ethnic groups. IQ scores in any group of people are spread across a bell curve ranging from a score of about 70 to about 130. There are outliers on either end, but most people are clustered around an average. There are differences between racial ethnic groups on the average in IQ. The average white IQ is arbitrarily set at 100. Blacks in the United States and in many other Western countries average 85. Hispanics, the average would be about 80. Native Americans, around that level. And then Japanese and Chinese Americans above the white average. And then Ashkenazi Jews, probably around 110 and 115. Linda's research has made her a scientific outcast. She's even been called a racist, a claim she denies. Her critics argue that IQ test results are heavily skewed by socioeconomic factors. Childhood nutrition and access to health care can vary widely between different racial groups. If you live in a good neighborhood with well-funded schools, you are more likely to be accustomed to the academic setting of an IQ test. And if you live in those neighborhoods, you are more likely to be Asian or white. There are also concerns over whether the test questions have a cultural bias, a bias reflected by the fact that it's the white IQ average that's set to 100. Is one race smarter than another? Depends on what you mean by smart. Could IQ scores predict the greatness of an artist like Picasso or of a political leader like Gandhi? IQ is a narrow obsession. No two people think the same way, regardless of their race. So here's a new question. If the brains of the races are similar now, will that always be true? We are still evolving. Could our brains one day become as different as those of border collies and beagles?